Hello everyone, Kryptonite here and welcome back to another video. So today I have another tips and tricks or things you didn't know about Dinkum video. I've got some pretty interesting ones in this video. If there's any you didn't realise, make sure you let me know down in the comments down below. And if you do like the video, make sure you hit that like button. And also don't forget to subscribe for more Dinkum content. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Okay, so did you know that the NPCs around your town, they all have their favourite food? Like for instance, Rain, his favourite food is corn. I'm not sure what the purpose of the NPCs having their favourite food. But if anyone does know, just let me know down in the comments down below. I do think it might have something to do with the fact that when you sell them, they are worth a bit more. But as you know, people like Rain, you can't really sell anything to them. As you can see here in the chat, it's just I want to chat. I'm not sure exactly what relevance this has, but it's just something you might not know about income. But something else you might not know is when you are in the mines and you find one of these crypts. Did you know that you can actually get a pickaxe and you can mine the wooden torches it's just handy and just saves you crafting them but also did you know that you can also mine the floor in these crypts which they give you a cement path so if you want a different look to your village you can by all means just mine all these you unfortunately can't mine the walls so that's a bit of a shame but did you also know that you can pick up your empty chests which is extremely handy because it gives you free storage it saves you crafting the wooden crates and they just look a little bit nicer but also did you know that if you're getting overwhelmed by enemies and you have an open crypt nearby if you just run into the crypt they won't follow you in and they won't attack you if you wait a little bit they will stop following you and they will disappear this just gives you a little bit of time to reset gain some health until you're ready to explore the mines again so while you're in the mines did you know that if you find a ruby like this you can head over to your elevator you can drop the ruby in the elevator and it won't despawn so you can carry on your exploration of the mines and find even more rubies you can place more than one ruby in here so you can just venture out into the mines collect as many rubies as you can pop them elevator ready for when you head back up did you also know that in the mines if you come across a situation like this where i am here on the map and i want to get to over here but there's a wall blocking me did you know that the walls in the mines are mineable so you can create your own paths just like that you don't have to necessarily follow the paths that are already in the mines for you so the next thing that you might not know about income is regards to the buffs that you can get in the game so most of the buffs are all self-explanatory by their icons but what a lot of people don't realize is what this buff that the pavlova and the jellyfish brew gives you which is this one here that has an x now what this buff gives you is an xp boost so if you're trying to grind up them levels on a certain thing pavlova or the jellyfish brew which can be crafted using the kegs and also jellyfish i've got a video about the three items you can brew using the kegs i'll leave the video down in the description below so make sure you check that one out also did you know when animals attack you if you lure them over to one of your campfires and make them walk through they will catch themselves on fire and they will do ticking damage and as you can see i just finished that crocodile off just by my campfires just a nice little tip if you get a little bit low on health and you've got a few campfires nearby there's something that not many people know about dinkum which is perfect if you are brand new to the game or whether you're deciding to start a new world is when you first start the game and arrive on the island time doesn't progress until you place the first three tents required in the storyline so what you can do is use this infinite amount of time to explore the map completely you can place your markers down wherever you want what i recommend doing if you are doing this is find all the teleport towers which will come in handy later on in the game you just want to mark them on your map so i've found one here so i'm just going to mark this on my map so now i know where that one is so what i also recommend you do is you collect as many seashells as you can they can be located all around the beach I recommend harvesting all of these bushes and all of these loose logs just harvest as much as you can with the unlimited amount of time you've got because once you've placed your tents and storyline starts you can basically sell all of these items and you have a massive boost of dinks to get you started in the game so not many people know about this hidden mechanic but it's really handy especially as i said if you're starting a new game or you are new to the game so there we go guys there's even more things you may not have known about dinkum and the mechanics within the game hopefully you enjoyed that video if you did make sure you hit that like button and make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any more content i try to upload every monday wednesday and friday at 12 p.m uk time so thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.